UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer said on Saturday Iran should not respond to Israeli airstrikes and he urged all sides to show restraint. He made the comments after Israel attacked Iran with a series of pre-dawn airstrikes Saturday in what it said was a response to the barrage of ballistic missiles the Islamic Republic fired upon Israel earlier this month. Speaking from the Commonwealth Summit in Samoa, Starmer said, I am clear that Israel has the right to defend itself against Iranian aggression. I'm equally clear that we need to avoid further regional escalation. Starmer also spoke about the importance of stability in the Pacific which he called a crossroads for global trade. That's why we're so committed to our AUKUS partnership. It's why our carrier strike group will be in the region next year. He also spoke about the need to provide finance for Commonwealth countries as a counterbalance to China's influence in the region. I've been making the case that the priority ought to be trade and investment and unlocking finance for Commonwealth countries, in order for them to build up the resilience they need. At the Gathering of Nations for the summit a debate about reparations for Britain's role in the slave trade has overshadowed talks. The UK has never formally apologized for its role in the trade and studies estimate Britain would owe between hundreds of millions and trillions of dollars in compensation to descendants of slaves. Asked about discussions on reparations, Starmer stressed that climate change was one of the most urgent issues at the summit. There is, as you rightly say, the paragraph in the communique about preparatory justice which does two things, he added. It notes calls for discussion and it, it agrees that this is the time for conversation. But I should be really clear here, in the two days we've been here, none of the discussions have been about money. Our position is very, very clear in relation to that. Good evening everyone and can I apologize for keeping you waiting? Reparations would not be on the agenda. It seems they have made their way into the final communique. This is a live situation and we are obviously monitoring it closely, alongside our partners. I am clear that Israel has the right to defend itself against Iranian aggression. I'm equally clear that we need to avoid further regional escalation and urge all sides to show restraint. Iran should not respond. We will continue to work with allies to de-escalate the situation across the region. UK, uh, after you told me that people who also make an income from property of shares... This region sits on a geopolitical fault line. It is the crossroads for global trade, so our prosperity and security at home depend on stability here. And that's why we're so committed to our AUKUS partnership. It's why our carrier strike group will be in the region next year. And it's why, despite the fact that we've flown halfway around the world, the Royal Navy was already here in Samoa, waiting to greet us. I called the crew of HMS Tamar yesterday to let them know how proud we are of them. And I announced that we'll be doing more in the Pacific Island nations to reinforce maritime security. It shows once again our commitment to the region, to supporting free and open Indo-Pacific, upholding our values and bringing new opportunities home to the United Kingdom. The, uh, the uh, election in July, your campaign was honest about three niche tax rises on private equity and private schools. And um, you're quite right to point to the fact that China is increasingly um, trying to be influential um, across Commonwealth countries, and we need to be clear about our values uh, of democracy and the rule of law. Um, but also, I've been making the case that the priority ought to be um, trade and investment and unlocking finance for uh, com uh, Commonwealth countries um, in order for them to build up the resilience they need. This is finance from international institutions is the issue that's come up time and again in the last two days um, and um, how they access that finance to take some of the measures of resilience that they need to take. Again, something that's very pressing in islands like this because 
Um, they are worried about the rising sea levels and therefore what, is the, what are the practical measures that they need to take now in order to guard um, against that. Um, Damaged relations with Commonwealth countries with your attempt at a hard line on this. Um, and today at the retreat, um, which was a retreat going on for um, six or now eight hours, I think, in the end, the theme for the day was chosen by the Prime Minister here in Samoa. Uh, and she chose resilience and climate. So I think that gives you a clear sense of um, the absolute priority here. And that's not surprising. You've spent some time here. You'll have seen just how vulnerable this island and similar islands are uh, to climate change. It is um, a paramount um, importance. There is, as you rightly say, the paragraph in the communique about um, uh, reparatory justice, uh, which does two things. It notes calls for discussion. Um, and it, agree, it agrees that this is the time for uh, conversation. But I should be really clear here, um, in the two days we've been here, um, none of the discussions have been about money. Um, our position is very, very clear uh, in relation to that. Thanks very much. The Iranian government has ordered its armed forces to be prepared for war with Israel. At the same time, Tehran is attempting to avoid direct confrontation, even at the cost of dismantling affiliated groups in Lebanon and Gaza, reports the New York Times. Four Iranian officials told the New York Times that Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei ordered the country's armed forces to develop multiple contingency plans in response to expected Israeli military retaliation. They warned that Iran would strike back if its territory suffered significant damage or casualties. However, Tehran might refrain from responding if Israel only targets a limited number of military sites and weapons depots. Officials, two of whom are members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, stressed that Iran would certainly retaliate if Israel hits oil facilities nuclear installations or high-ranking officials. They did not rule out the possibility of an attack using up to 1,000 ballistic missiles or disrupting energy supplies in the region. According to the report, in recent weeks, Iran has been working to strengthen alliances with regional Arab countries but has also warned them that any assistance to Israel during an attack would make them a legitimate target. Nasser Imani, a political analyst close to the government, told the New York Times that Iran does not seek a major war with Israel, saying, We don't see any benefits in the region exploding. He added that at this stage, Iran does not view war with Israel as a threat to its existence. However, he believes that a prolonged conflict would be devastating and could derail the new government's efforts to negotiate with the West in hopes of lifting harsh US sanctions and improving the dire state of Iran's economy. Two Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps members told the New York Times that senior generals who had not commanded battalions in Iraq and Syria and are now fighting Islamic State militants have been deployed to all border provinces. There is concern that armed ethnic separatist groups and militants, such as ISIS, could launch attacks and provoke unrest if Iran enters the war. In recent months, tensions in the Middle East have significantly escalated. Since the Hamas terrorist invasion of Israel from Gaza in October 2023, Iranian-backed Islamic militant groups Lebanon's Hezbollah and Yemen's Houthis have launched regular attacks on Israeli territory. By early autumn, the intensity of the strikes and confrontations reached their peak. On October the 1st, the Israeli army initiated a ground operation in southern Lebanon to push militants away from the northern border and stop rocket and drone attacks. Additionally, in recent months, Israeli intelligence has eliminated several leaders of Islamic militant groups. At the end of July in Tehran, IRGC leader Ismail Ghania was assassinated. The residence where he was staying was rigged with explosives and detonated by Iranian security forces at the request of Mossad. On September the 27th, Israel carried out a strike in Beirut, killing Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. In response on the night of October the 2nd, Iran launched its most extensive attack, firing around 180 missiles at Israel. Israel has vowed to retaliate and has already scheduled the timing of its counter-strike. A reprisal may occur as soon as before the US presidential election on November the 5th.